When was the last time you looked at the night sky? For ages, we have stared upward to that kingdom of blackness and eternal quiet, hoping that the darkened expanse would give us an undeniable signal that we're not alone. A message from the gods. But what if this desire turns out to be insanely dangerous? And what if our wonder and curiosity are leading us toward contact with something as fierce and unforgiving as the freezing void itself? At the Institute of SETI, or the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, they refer to the lack of detectable signals from aliens as the Great Silence. This is a silence that falls over the Milky Way galaxy that contains 200 billion stars and possibly 100 billion planets. If we theorize that even a small number of those had some kind of life, and out of those, a smaller portion can harbor intelligent forms of alien life, in all probability, these emerging intelligences would be looking for us sometime, right? These variables make up what scientists call the Drake Equation which then tells us that out of the billions of potential planets in our galactic neighborhood, there should be at least a few dozen civilizations looking for us. The odds we're alone are actually very small. Officially speaking, there has not been any public disclosure on such contact and no evidence of radio signals or any other communication. And this is paradoxical to the variables in the Drake equation and this is what is known as the Fermi Paradox. It's hard to fathom that somewhere across the ocean of stars and heavenly bodies, at inconceivably large distances away, that a wayward civilization is attempting to sail through that void to find us. But if they have already come, there's a terrifying possibility to consider why they have not made their presence obvious. Enter the Dark Forest Theory. Chinese science fiction writer Liu Sixin popularized this bizarre new thought experiment in his book, The Three-Body Problem. The following excerpt from this work paints a very pragmatic but unsettling explanation for the eerie silence. Quote, The universe is a dark forest. Every civilization is an armed hunter stalking through the trees like a ghost gently pushing aside branches that block the path and trying to tread without making a sound. Even breathing is done with care. The hunter has to be careful because everywhere in the forest are stealthy hunters like him. And if he finds another life, another hunter, angel, or demon, a delicate infant to a tottering old man, a fairy or a demigod, there's only one thing he can do, open fire and eliminate them." Unquote. For life on Earth to survive, there is a natural default for defense and self-preservation built into most organisms. So why should we assume anything different when peering out into the cosmos? The alien minds we encounter could see us as a potential threat. Having survived possible eons of these encounters, it would only take a few of them going badly to give them a zero-risk policy or we could be a disease risk, viewed like a virus to them. And destroying us without hesitation is the only practical solution for these beings. They may see us as potential predators looking for sustenance or an energy source, and there could be no way of determining our level of desperation. The late physicist Stephen Hawking often warned of the risk of being too naive about first contact with another civilization, saying, quote, such advanced aliens would become nomads, looking to conquer and colonize whatever planets they could reach. And if you look at history, contact between humans and less intelligent organisms have often been disastrous from the point of view, and encounters between civilizations with advanced versus primitive technologies have gone badly for the less advanced. A civilization reading one of our messages could be billions of years ahead of us, and if so, they will be vastly more powerful and may not see us as any more valuable than we see bacteria." Unquote. An even more disturbing question to ask is, what if we're on the cosmic menu? 
Many conspiracy theories posit that there are several alien species already here among us, some using our emotional states of anxiety and anguish as food sources, like energy vampires. Still others describe the human race in these scenarios being farmed and consumed as food for a superior alien civilization. So should we even be trying to contact our potential space neighbors? We may not even actually have a choice at this point. The first radio broadcast was made in 1895, and for the last 120 plus years, countless radio and TV signals have been beaming our cosmic voice into the stars. And although weakened some by the long distance, these early waves have already traveled 100 light years into the abyss. What if some alien entities have discovered our location already, but have chosen to deliberately conceal their presence, and keep close tabs on us, and even experiment on us, keeping us restrained and oblivious on a sort of prison planet? The zoo hypothesis Another possible answer to the Fermi Paradox lines up nicely with this idea. Let's consider this for a second. One could argue that the aliens that want to limit contact and want to improve humanity through experimentation have good intentions, but the zoo hypothesis becomes a bit dark when considering that it would be their definition of improvement that would dictate the nature of these experiments and used as means to justify any level of cruelty they saw fit to inflict upon a captive humanity. But perhaps they're waiting in the shadows for us to reach some technological advancement or new level of consciousness before they reveal themselves fully. It seems we may be on the precipice of some major alien disclosure, and I believe there is an agenda to make this into a positive event maybe even a return of the old gods. And much of humanity will celebrate their alien savior's arrival, but I will be watching carefully for their hidden motives and need for secrecy. The darkness of the occult have always surrounded the contact with these beings. But I will save those stories for another video. Tell me what you think in the comments and subscribe to A Good Fire for everything myth, mystery, conspiracy, and truth. I will see you guys soon.